Good evening, fellow councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to tonight's meeting of corporate scrutiny. Unfortunately, the chairman, councillor Thomas Jay, is away for this meeting, so uh, I'll be deputising as the uh, vice chair. At which point, I'll take us to item one, which is apologies for absence. Have we had any, Tracy? Yeah, I've had apologies from Travis Jay and I've had apologies from Sheree Pinkley. We should have a substitute with Jan Roderick. Okay, so we could be expecting Joan to hold up. Uh, can we also add apologies from Councillor John Wade? Unfortunately, he's currently stuck on the M40 in traffic. Okay, I'll take us to item two, minutes of the previous meeting. Does anybody want to move the minutes or discuss the minutes? Councillor Goodall, happy to move them? Happy to move. Yeah. Councillor Harper, happy to second. Any matters arising before we move to the vote? All those in favour? Those are carried, thank you. Item three on our agenda is declarations of interest. Does any member have any de anything to declare? I'll take that as silence. Uh, item four on our agenda is the chairman's update. Uh, Thomas has sent me the following note. Uh, just to note that the July meeting was cancelled as items weren't ready. Uh, one of the items has been added to tonight's meeting and we will keep the cancelled meeting in our back pocket for future use later in the year as we may need it for future high streets funds, etc. So that's all Thomas has uh, had to update me on that. Uh, on item five, responses to reports from the Corporate Scrutiny Committee, there's none to note at present. Item six, consideration of matters referred to Corporate Scrutiny from Cabinet to Council. Uh, obviously a bit early in the year, so nothing to note there yet. Which takes us to item seven, uh, the forward plan. Uh, it's a discussion item, and I'm happy to open the floor if anything, anybody wants to discuss anything on the forward plan. Okay, in that case, I'll take us to item eight, which is the quarter one performance report. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna extremely struggle to scrutinize this tonight. As I was informed at half past two today, miraculously, the leader of the council is on leave. I was informed later that the deputy leader has miraculously gone on leave and no senior officer was available. A cynic in me might say there's some cowardice going on here, but I'll, I'm not a cynic. So while we have an officer present who will happy to note down our questions and reply to us at a future date, I'm not sure how we scrutinize the quarterly performance report because for me, scrutiny is about challenge. Uh, we ask questions, we get answers. We ask further questions from those answers and we seek solutions. As that is not possible this evening, I don't know how we scrutinize it, but I'm happy to be guided by members on how you want to proceed, but there's no one to ask any questions. Thank you, Chair. I would perhaps suggest that if if members have got any questions, they provide some uh, some in writing and perhaps uh, get answers at a future meeting. Maybe. Any further points or questions? I mean, I, I have 22 questions jotted down, <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy to type them up on email if that's simpler. That's yeah. Uh, which gives us the one complication we have left is the recommendation on the report is that this committee endorse the quarter, uh, quarterly performance report, which I think is incredibly difficult as we've had no chance to scrutinise it. I don't know how we endorse something we've not had a chance to look into. So I don't know how we send a recommendation and I'm looking to be guided by members to cabinet saying we endorse it. I don't think we can, but obviously I'm happy to be guided from members on that. Any questions or comments? Can we not simply just put it over to the next meeting? Can we not just discuss this at the next meeting? It's obviously impossible to do at this one. Uh, do, do, you, do you want to move a motion to Cabinet, um, if this helps, uh, that actually we set up a, a future meeting of this Corporate Scrutiny Committee in the earliest possible date in the diary and invite uh, the leader, the Deputy Leader and the Senior Officers back to give us the opportunity to ask the questions we want to ask? Would that be a simpler solution? And give us an opportunity to actually ask the questions we want to ask? Is that the only solution? Well, I would move that. If you're happy to move, John, we um, set up a, a, the first earliest date, another current scrutiny meeting, call this item back in to be properly questioned. I'm happy to second that. Yeah, we can't do this at this point without the proper, the proper people here. No. Thanks, Chair. Um, just not sure we need to recommend a cabinet to that we need a, a future meeting. I think we could just take a future meeting. 
I take that absolutely as a fair point. If we just just the recommendation likely that I, myself or Thomas Jay, whichever one gets to cabinet, goes to cabinet, obviously explains we were a little bit disappointed that we didn't have the opportunity and we'll be requesting their presence in future. But yeah, we set up the meeting anyway, because you're right, we don't need cabinet's permission to scrutinise them, do we? You're quite right, Councillor Goddard. So if we can adjust that slightly, that we approach cabinet and ask that we're never put in this situation again, and obviously put them on notice that we will be calling them at a future date to come and let us question the quarterly performance report. To me, it's the most important report to scrutiny it's the performance of the council and it needs to be scrutinized and that's not a party political attack this is about us doing our jobs so if members are minded to support that i'm happy to myself or thomas to go and do so all those in favor that is carried thank you uh can't move by councillor harper if you're still comfortable seconded by myself Okay, thank you, committee. I'm happy to take us to item nine, street market update, report of the assistant director of growth and regeneration. Do we have an officer to cover this report? No, I think it was just a, a discussion. We've got the report, haven't we? Yeah, we've got the report. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the report has been circulated with the agenda. Just bear with me, I'm just opening it. Did read it over the weekend. Obviously, it's an update on the position of the Tamworth Street Market. As we know, uh, Tamworth has a very historic market. If you want to know the real history of the Tamworth Market, I'd liaise to Councillor Harper, who I'm pretty sure knows the history of Tamworth Market far better than I would. But yeah, it's the current position, obviously, since we retendered in 2021, and the market was retendered to LSD Promotions. Obviously, there's a brief report in front of us, just four pages. Obviously, with some of the challenges the market's had through COVID and, you know, a 23% downfall, downfall in footfall since COVID. So there's some interesting things in there, some of the challenges they've had, some of the new schemes they've tried to introduce. So I'm happy to open the floor to anybody that wants to discuss anything in there. But again, apologies, we have no technical support from officers. Um, some months ago, I wrote a, a paper uh, which I submitted to the leader and the deputy uh, of what I, I thought might be a good way for Tamworth to progress. One of the issues in the report was concerning the market, which personally I'm not sure is working to the best uh, that it could do at the moment. I'm, I think it could do with being a little wider, the parameters could do with uh, spreading a bit. But one of the things that I think could could be worth um, looking at and investigating is the establishment of a market hall in Tamworth. There's recently been one established in Shrewsbury and it's a huge success. Um, we, ne we merely need to uh, find a site and provide undercover, an indoor undercover market um, that would be open per per permanently uh, six days a week. Um, Market Street obviously would be in a perfect place to put one. There's a site just over the road there that's empty, um, the, um, the building there. There are some buildings, very large buildings down there, which I suspect may not be there for too much longer. So, so I would suggest that we start looking and thinking if, A, this would be a desirable thing to have in the town. and B, how we can make it happen. Um, I would open it up to uh, fellow councillors to have a have their opinion uh, on, on this particular point. Uh, can I thank Councillor Harper for giving us a good, lovely little walk into a discussion? I think it's a good starting point. Does anybody want to follow on from uh, John's points? I mean, I'm, I'm happy to start there. I, I absolutely 100% agree with you, John. You know, trying to promote and grow and improve what is, you know, we are historically a market town. That's what Tamworth is. We've probably outgrown the status as a whole place of a market town, but we have to keep that essence. As we know, if I remember rightly, I think the original charter goes back to the 1600s, if I remember rightly. Sorry, John, go on. The original market goes back to Saxon times. Really? There, there you go. There's been a market here since the time of, uh, well... I was, I was only a lad at the time. But. <laughs> you and your pet dinosaur. <laughs> um, yeah, so absolutely, you know, Tamworth has a good history of a market town. We can't see that die. It is important we look after our culture and our heritage. So I'd actually echo John's thoughts that 
any work that can be done to progress the market, improve the market, and not offer new options around the market, I would 100% support and look to sit on any committee that actually wants to actively seek the funding to do so. Brilliant. I'd absolutely support that, John. Thank you. Chris? Yeah. Uh, uh, carrying on off that, and also it's a... Um, it's also a uh, comment on to the uh, challenges as well. I mean, if we want our market uh, to expand on that, then we also want everyone to, to be well the safe as well. That gets hindered if we still haven't got them uh, uh, them uh, 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 well, I'll have a um, pop operation as well. Uh, I mean, these last few kind of weeks, I've been Coming back, uh, uh, from my work, seeing over the Phoenix, I'm just uh, recording the registrations, and a lot of the cars which are actually um, using. Uh, the area uh, but um, there's uh, loads of them not actually using this as a uh, for my uh, system as well and obviously that's kind of dangerous anyway we've already got cameras up there and yet it's always this issue um, uh, I mean in this past couple of weeks I've done 150 registrations so if we really want to expand our, our market now, that has got to stop. I mean, I'm happy to uh, challenge the county council on that anyway, but that is really that's just, uh, ridiculous, really. You're quite right, Councillor Cook, yes, and it does also mention in the report the historic problems with the bollards have been a problem. I mean, I, I was leader of the council when the bollards first broke, so I actually know what broke them, and it's the most ridiculous story you'll ever hear in your life. You know, basically, the, what operates those bollards historically was a hard phone, phone line. Somebody would press a button to lower them, and technically a phone call was made to the bollards, and they would lower, and then later they would hire. In around 2015, the bollards kept getting phone calls asking if they'd ever taken out PPI insurance, and it broke them. Now, I'd love to tell you I'm making that up. I'm not. <laughs> That's what actually broke them, and they've struggled with them ever since. But it, it is an issue raised in the report about, you know, making sure the bollards work properly. As we're aware, you know, and you work in the town centres, you see it more than I do, but the amount of cars parking up and down these streets that are destined areas, it's got to be dealt with. So, yeah, absolutely agree. Councillor Goodall, you wanted to come in. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, it's effectively the same point, point that, uh, that Chris and yourself have made. Um, and I don't really want to focus too much on the challenges from this report, but, but I think it is an important thing that we do discuss. Um, it is clearly a problem. It's a problem that's not being fixed. So I'm just trying to understand what, what pressure we can, we can put on. So um, we obviously have a number of county councillors on cabinet, so I don't think there's, there would be anything unfair with regard to making a, a recommendation that they they take that that point to uh, um, to county, um, so I would I would move that we we make a recommendation that we that the that the leader writes formally to to the county council. Um, let's see if we can get this once and for all fixed. 
it really is important. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gola. I can imagine as well as yourself, as an engineer by trade, it must be absolutely infuriating to see something so simple not work. But I'd be happy to second that motion if members are minded to send that recommendation to Cabinet that the Leader officially writes to the County and has to resolve this once and for all. All those in favour? Have we got that trace? Yeah. Obviously not the end of the discussion though. I mean, obviously there is other parts of this. If I could make a suggestion, obviously we're going to put an urgent meeting somewhere in the diary for the quarterly performance report, rather than just be about that. How about we invite Matt Fletcher, who actually, from a council perspective, manages the market, you know, he manages the contract with LSD. Now, I'm aware, because I was aware in the tender, in, I was involved in the tender in 2021, actually within the contract with LSD is a three monthly meeting where they sit down and discuss progress and new ideas and how they improve the market. Should we ask Matt if he can attend in a future meeting and actually we can throw some of these points at him and ask how these quarterly meetings are going and what progress is coming and what options are out there to improve our market and then we can raise suggestions like you did John about how can we get a more of an indoor market and do and actually get some you know professional officer here to actually answer our questions I mean it's just a suggestion I'm throwing out there Councillor Harper I would absolutely endorse that uh, chair I think that's a really good idea because I think the market issue has to be addressed if I was a shopkeeper in Tamworth and somebody came with a market stall and slapped it outside my shop I would be far from happy so I think that as we look to upgrade and manage our market, we look for uh, areas where it could be relocated. One that sticks to mind is, is a, a thing that I've been trying to push for for a long time is the pedestrianisation of the Corporation Street car park, the plain display car park there, which obviously is being used for car parking at the moment, but we are in the process of establishing a new car park, a multi-storey car park in Gungate, which um, I don't know how many car parks we'll need for then, but uh, that's the perfect town centre site, and it could be much better used uh, for a market square or whatever um, than just a car park. Um, it's uh, obviously opposite the uh, assembly rooms, and there's a perfect location. It might reinvigorate the market, um, I mean, we've spoken that we could have a market, an indoor market. Um, I'm not sure if that's me or not. Possibly. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, if we have an indoor market, of course, you can expand it to, uh, to cater for um, mar fresh market produce, craft stores, all, all these sort of things that we currently don't have, and expand the appeal and make Tamworth a more appealing place for people to come to. So um, I would think it's an excellent idea to invite uh, Matthew Fletcher to discuss these uh, issues and see if we can't really get to grips with uh, the market and get it. The one thing in, in, in life I think that um, we all realise is that you can't be predictable. You must change. You must not keep doing the same thing week after week after week where people know exactly what they're going to see, where they're going to see it, and all this sort of, oh, go away! I'm sorry about that. I'll turn them off. So I would, uh, I would certainly back exactly uh, your motion, and uh, I, I would like to second it. I'm so sorry. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I think I think it is important. We uh, Matt is here, and um, it's his report. We 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 really need the officer there to, to to do it justice. So I think I think that's a sensible thing to do. On a market discussion, or shall I take us to the next item? Lovely. Next item is working group updates. Uh, I wasn't at the uh, first meeting of corporate scrutiny. Unfortunately, I was in Morocco at the time. Well, I say unfortunately, I was happy to be in Morocco at the time. Um, so I don't know uh, what working groups were set up, if I'm being perfectly honest. So is anybody on any working groups or any updates for this meeting? Yes. I don't, just, just to report, I don't think there was any working group set up, so I don't think anything's, uh, anything's there to be updated. 
final item, which is corporate scrutiny work plan. Uh, discussion item, the paper has been circulated with the agenda. If it'll open. So obviously on there, we've got from today, August 16th, uh, which is street market update and quarter one performance report, which we're gonna fetch back to a future meeting when we actually get some officers support to help us scrutinize those two items. So obviously Tracy will look to get that in the diary as soon as humanly possible, and I'll update Thomas tonight. We've obviously got on the 6th of October, the draft asset management strategy and the Gungate regeneration program in terms of reference. And then in November, we've got the quarter two performance report and the joint waste contract update. And in February, we've got the quarter three performance report. Obviously, we've got some other uh, items on there that we're looking to uh, shoehorn into a meeting, for want of a better term, uh, which is update on corporate prioritization, uh, Solway Trading Company update, Gungate Master Plan, Reset and Recovery Work Streams, and Staffordshire Leaders Board. Obviously, the meetings available to us from here are currently the 6th of October, the 17th of November, and the 8th of February. Obviously, we've listed, and you've got the papers in front of you, what's on those meetings. Does anybody want anything added to those meetings or anything bouncing, anything what anybody wants to push for or anything that anybody wants fetching forward? Obviously, you can't fetch forward the quarterly performance reports because they're time-dated. They're time but anything to discuss on uh, the work plan? Yeah. 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 Yeah